strange. I know so very little about you. I know very little about you. Just the fact that you had your teeth straightened. <laughs> wow, Casablanca. That film was the best back in the day. Woo. I mean, it's, it's, you know, not popcorn, but, you know, it's all I could find. You know, it'd be a good idea to see how this got started. Like, how does film work? How does projectors work, for that matter? So, let's go back to my lab back in modern day. Let's find out. Okay, that went a little bit wrong. How did I get up? Okay, that's beside the point. All right, now I'm back in the lab. So I'm gonna take you over to the chalkboard to show you how an early projector would work. Basically, early projectors ran on a very simple principle. You had a reel of footage, which is basically a collection of still images. You have it run down to where a light source will shine onto the still images, which will project outward and then expand it on out onto a screen. Now, if it was for a color projector, the concept would still remain the same, except that the light would go through a group of prisms, which would then project out color onto the screen. Now, in direct comparison to the earlier form of projectors, a more modern form would be an LCD projector, which stands for Liquid Crystal Display. These projectors typically send light from a metal halide lamp through a prism or series of dichrotic filters that separate light to three panels, one each for red, green, and blue components of the video signal. As polarized light passes through the panels, individual pixels can be opened to allow light to pass or closed to block the light. The combination of open and closed pixels can produce a wide range of colors and shades. I'm looking 365 letters. <laughs> this, this, this film is so beautiful. <laughs> okay, audience. We're gonna move on now. To cassette tapes. I gotta get better at this time travel thing. I keep ending up at all the wrong places. Here in the 80s, music played such a big part in this culture, which, by the way, is incredibly awesome. And with the advent of cassette tapes, it revolutionized the music industry, which before then everyone just had record players, and no one likes that. Cassette tapes were portable, durable, and they had an ease of copying music, which no one had ever seen before. And it generalized the younger generation by bringing to light underground rock bands and punk bands. You know, the cassette tape wasn't even arrived in America until 1966, but in 1979, it gained enormous popularity with the Sony Walkman. And that, again, revolutionized the industry about how people considered music. I mean, you could listen to it anywhere you wanted, however you wanted. And it's 80s music. You can't get any better than that. Speaking of which, I think I hear some right now. Oh man, there's an 80s guy in the hallway. We gotta go talk to him and see what he's got. Okay, audience, to fit in, I'm going to be using 80s terms so he won't think I'm from the future or something. So let's do this. Hey, man, what's crack a lackling, dude? Listen to some jams? Yeah, I got this banging cassette that I'm here getting crunk to. That's where it's at, man. Can you give us the 411 that cassette player got there, homeboy? Um, yeah, dude. Well, uh, I got this cassette here, which is the bomb, but it's pretty tight pieces to it. There's a sweet magnetically coated plastic tape chilling between these two miniature spool things. Magnetic tape is a sound recording format which is passed and wound between these two outrageous miniature spools. All these sick pieces are held together in a protective plastic shell, which makes the whole concept of cassette tapes totally legit, man. Even better, I got this righteous Sony Walkman, and I was like, whoa, what is this? Well, yeah, you get the idea, but now I can listen to my cassettes anywhere. I feel so in the mix, like, you know, I got all my new jams I never heard before, dude. The Walkman is so... Man, I'm not even going to say that word, but, but I can listen to it whenever I veg out or whenever I want to be rocking. You know what I mean, Space Cadet? I mean, just listen to the one side of this Mondo cassette tip, 
it finishes running and I flip over because it's on the other side and it's getting crumped. It's mad cool, man. Cassette tapes are raw. That's where it's at, man. Shut up! That is sick! You seem like a happening, man. You know what? It was tubular to meet you, but I don't think I caught your name. Yo, home fry. I'm Steve Nye, the 80s guy. Alright, well that's really disturbing, but I got a jet and time travel to go check out a more modern version of the cassette tape. Well, um, bye dad. Oh, I mean, you know, Steve Nye. Time travel, yeah, tubular later, man. Cowabunga! Ooh. Ooh. Absolutely freezing in there. Alright. This time travel thing is just getting way out of hand. Okay, but I know where I'm at. This is 1994, and I'm here to talk to an expert on VHS tapes. Now, I know it was around here somewhere. Let's see, looking for the expert, looking for the expert, and that's... what? What? This is... Are you Godfather? Um, okay, yes, I am your fairy godfather. Oh my goodness, I wished for you for so long. I wished for a unicorn, and I got that, and now I wished for you, and it came true. It all came true. Do you want to watch The Little Mermaid with me? Well, you know what? I think it would be more interesting to delve deeper into your Disney fantasy thing you got going on. Well, hey, you got some VHS tapes, some Disney ones. Let's see, I'll explain that to you. That will be much more fun. Alright, you know, one of the interesting things about early VHS systems is that they ran a power source of an incandescent light bulb, which was sometimes erratic and faulty and would cause the system to think that there was cassette tape loaded when there really wasn't any. Or it would detect a blown bulb and cause the system to fail altogether. Now this was changed later on when they started using LED lights, so that was a huge improvement. As with nearly all cassette-based video systems, they all worked on the same principle. Basically, you have the cassette shell, which would pull the tape along a head drum, which speeds up to a rate of 1800 revolutions per minute. Fairy Godfather, are you going to grant me a wish soon? I don't really know what you're talking about, and my unicorn bubbles is sick. Okay, I'm a broadcast guy. I'm not great at unicorn healing, but I am fluent in time travel. So, see you later.